discuss uh, autotrophic nutrition total about autotrophic nutrition um, and uh, about photosynthesis in deep how the photosynthesis is occurred in plants so what are the sources of photosynthesis and everything okay and now uh, we have discussed that chlorophyll is one of the pigment which is green in color it is responsible for it is responsible in trapping sunlight yes do we discuss that yes okay so then we will see other modes of nutrition in plants why we are discussing other modes of nutrition so uh, as we discuss that chlorophyll is very important to trap sunlight if chlorophyll is absent then what plants do okay so there are some plants which do not have chlorophyll in it so they cannot synthesize food then how they will survive and how they derive nutrition so um, like humans and animals plants also depends on the food produced by other plants so um, there are some plants which depend on the food produced by other plants why they are depending on other plant students because they lack chlorophyll so they can't synthesize their food so one minute is an organism that lives on other organism for food clear now uh students do you ever heard of a plant which eats insects yes or no yes i'm going to put the question um like do you know a plant which can eat insect yes ma'am venus fly trap yes okay and uh, very good and pitcher plant pitcher plant very good so what these plants do means they can trap insect and they can digest that particular insects okay so these yes, plants may be green or no or in some other color so irrespective of the color so what they do means they trap insects and they eat them so these yes, kinds of plants are called as insectivorous plants okay so yes. in uh, example let me show you an example of insectivorous plants
Can you see the picture, students? Yes, ma'am. So this is called as picture plan. So this is a picture shaped structure. So where the leaf apex. So you know apex means the tip of the leaf is modified into jug or picture like structure. Jug or picture like structure. Okay. So leaf apex is modified into jug or picture like structure. So can you see the, uh, there was a lid here. Can you see a lid? Yes, ma'am. So there it's was a lid. Like or, a lid like structure. Yeah, there was a lid like structure. And inside, so inside uh, here, can you see the way here inside? So in yes. that, inside, in, uh, inner surface is, inner surface consists of hair. Inside the picture, there are hair which are directed downwards okay whenever the uh, whenever the insect lands on that particular picture like whenever it enters into that particular picture like particular jug like structure the lid closes and the insect trapped inside that picture understood so the lid closes whenever the insect enters into it the lid closes and insect was trapped inside it and that insect uh, as we already discussed that tiny hair like structure so it will be stuck into that and that insect is digested by the digestive juices secreted inside the picture and its nutrients were absorbed clear So what is the phenomenon here is, so it is an insect eating plant, so called as insectivorous plant. So it has digestive enzymes in it, which can digest the insects which are in it. And there was a lid like structure. Whenever the insect enters into that particular picture, the lid closes and the insect was trapped inside. And it is digested by the digestive enzymes or digestive juices in the picture and the nutrients are absorbed. So these kinds of plants are called insectivorous plants. So why these plants are having these kind of modified structures means these plants generally do not get all the required nutrients from the soil in which they grow. Okay, so due to this, they will perform this particular phenomenon. Students, understood? Nobody is answering. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So why these plants eat insects means they uh, live in particular soil which is having deficiency of nutrients like nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, etc. So these are the particular nutrients which are absent. Okay. So to attain these particular nutrients, these plants eat small insects and small animals which enter into it. So these plants also, you can call it as carnivorous plants. Majumdar, please turn off your audio. Open up. Mute yourself. So these are also called as carnivorous plants as they are feeding, uh, as they are uh, dependent on insects. Okay, then we will see other modes of nutrition in plants like already we discussed, uh, cascuta, insectivorous plants. And then coming to next one is saprotrophs. So saprotrophs. So saprotrope means that any organism, you can consider any organism, but that organism 
uh, it must be feeding on the absorbing or dead decaying organic matter then only it is called saprotroph so any organism any organism that feeds by absorbing dead organic matter okay so mostly saprotrophs included are algae and sorry not algae bacteria and fungi so mostly bacteria and fungi are considered as saprotrophs okay so examples fungi bacteria so what is the role of fungi means fungi what it can do uh, what it can do is it is most efficient in decomposing i think you you, are, you know about decomposing term right complex molecules and recycling back recycling those nutrients so this is the thing like what it does it decomposes all the complex molecules uh, and it absorbs nutrients coming to the bacteria these are also decomposers these are also nothing but decomposers they also do a decomposing decomposing of dead animals and it it bacteria is efficient in converting animal tissues so this is the difference you can remember students converting animal tissue to simpler organic molecule organic compounds so bacteria mostly feeds on the organic tissue whereas fungi it feeds on complex molecules and it is most efficient clear students yes ma'am so examples of saprotrophs are fungi and bacteria so parasite example we have seen cascuta and for insectivorous plant we have seen a picture plant next one the saprotroph other example water molds it is also a saprotroph it is also a saprotroph okay water mold is also called as oomycetes is also called oomycetes so where you can find this uh, water molds uh, mostly means in fresh as well as in salt water environment so uh, wherever you go you can find these uh, water molds okay clear this is also an example of saprotroph and its function is also it helps in decomposing next so we'll move on to the next chapter how nutrients are replenished in the soil i think you're clear until this yes, yes ma'am now we will see how nutrients are replenished in the soil like how it is being absorbed in the soil and how it is used so uh, see uh, in the while the time of cultivation before sowing seed what uh, farmers do students they will pluck they will plow the land right and they spread certain manure in the form of fertilizers in the field yes does farmer use manure or fertilizers in the field yes or no akshaya majumdar yuvraj 
yes ma'am yes, ma so why do they do why do they do because uh, plants absorb nutrients and minerals water everything from the soil right so if the soil is rich in all the nutrients only then the plant can absorb them yes ma'am suppose if uh, suppose see as we are telling that plant absorbs nutrients from the soil then soil will be having less nutrients because these are absorbed by plant correct yes ma'am so the soil nutrients are keep on declining suppose yes. this year i made a uh, i made a crop so uh, after that i'll like uh, uh, i'll um, use that yield i will sell them or something i'll do so after 6 months again i'll keep another crop yes yes so this is the way how, how farmers do so for each crop the nutrients in the soil are getting decreased because plants are absorbing that nutrients so there is um, like deficiency in the soil so to uh, like uh, in order so uh, to balance the deficiency what farmers are doing they are using manures and fertilizers which contains nutrients in it so which are rich in nitrogen phosphorus potassium etc so these are the fertilizers used by farmers fertilizers or manures used by the farmers which are rich in this why because soil uh, to balance the deficiency of soil nutrients mama here yeah. so if for every crop these nutrients must be added so manure and fertilizers must be added every time uh, for uh, for every crop yes and time to time because the soil must be enriched with all the nutrients so we can grow plants and keep them healthy okay when if the particular nutrient is supplied then only we can grow the healthy plants okay generally uh, crop plants absorb lot of nitrogen from the soil so what crop plants do students crop plants absorbs a lot of nitrogen and the soil becomes deficient deficient in nitrogen okay so this nitrogen uh, as it is deficient in nitrogen so soil is now completely deficient in nitrogen so they need nitrogen how they need nitrogen obviously nitrogen is present in the soil is that is absorbed by the plants already okay and nitrogen is also present in the atmosphere why do the plants can't take nitrogen uh, from the atmosphere because the nitrogen they need nitrogen in soluble form only so they need this is the main requirement they need nitrogen in a soluble form okay so because of so if they need nitrogen in soluble form means it must be dissolved in uh, it must be in soil okay so but soil is deficient in nitrogen so there is a bacterium called as rhizobium which can take atmospheric nitrogen and convert into usable form so the bacterium called bacterium called rhizobium can take atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into a usable form okay so this is the rhizobium the role uh, what rhizobium efficient in 
converting atmospheric nitrogen to usable form but rhizobium cannot make it own food but rhizobium cannot make its own food so it needs food so what it does means it lives in mainly roots of leguminous plants so all the leguminous like gram peas beans all whatever the like all the leguminous plants it stays and it provides the nitrogen and in return plants provide food and shelter to the bacteria so rhizobium leaves in gram peas and other legumes and provide them with nitrogen okay and in return in return plants provide food and shelter food shelter to the bacteria clear yes students clear yes ma'am so now which kind of relationship means here both are benefited so the rhizome bacteria is benefited as well as the plant is benefited so this kind of relationship is called as symbiotic relationship symbiotic relationship understood now um, i think we have covered almost all topics now we will start solving ncert question okay so i think we we have left with activities yes yes ma'am so activity 1 what is activity 1 students green plants can photosynthesize only green plants can photosynthesize is the first activity correct yes so to prove this what we are taking we are taking a leaf with two colors okay beaker stand bunsen burner water test tube and ethanol iodine okay now what we do we will take a leaf in boiling water and we will boil for about 2 minutes so due to uh, this boiling cause the cell wall to break okay now take that particular leaf in a test tube and this test tube in very hot water for about 10 minutes okay then alcohol see first what we are doing first step water boiling what we are doing first step is in water we are boiling for about 2 minutes so uh, after boiling what happens cell wall breaks okay now what we are doing we are filling Three fourth of test tube with alcohol. Okay, and now this has to be in hot condition for ten minutes. So now alcohols warm up. 
as we are placing in alcohol so what happens with this step chlorophyll from the leaf partially almost so chlorophyll whatever the color is there that becomes colorless chlorophyll removed and leaf becomes colorless and be removed and becomes colorless understood what is the first step we are boiling in the hot water so that cell wall breaks and then we are boiling with alcohol uh, uh, then the color of the leaf becomes colorless because chlorophyll is removed so after 10 minutes what you will do is you will remove the leaf and dip it in warm water for few minutes so that leaf becomes soft next dip leaf in warm water after 10 minutes while we are doing this to make soft to make leaf soft okay now place this leaf on a white color tail and add drops of oil next what we are doing placing leaf on white color tail and add few drops of iodine okay now what happens means only the green portion of the leaf will turn blue black in color because it indicates that what does it indicate students starch is only present in green area of the leaf hence only green leaves can photosynthesize and make food clear yes ma'am <laughs> so the conclusion is starch only present in green area and we also discussed one another activity in the introduction class that we are covering the leaf of a healthy plant which was very broad with a uh, like a black paper and we are living for about two days in presence of sunlight and after two days we are we are plucking that leaf and boiling in alcohol and then placed in what solution students iodine solution so on placing in iodine solution wherever the starch is there it turns into blue color clear next activity is to study the growth of fungi activity to study growth of fungi so for this what we are taking we are taking bread water and a box with lid so first what we are doing we are considering a bread and the bread has to be moistened with water okay now place this bread in a closed box with a lid bread in closed box with a lid and it must be uh, kept in a warm place for about few days so after few days you can see whitish green and brown patches of the bread i think everybody know this um uh, on bread you can find some fungi color of uh, the bread changes due to growth on it okay so the conclusion is the patches on the bread whichever you can see the color patches are due to the growth of fungus on the bread okay next ncert question what is the first question students can you read the first question one second yeah, yeah.
Mom, can I? Yeah, sure. Mom, uh, how do organisms take? Why do organisms need to take food? Mom, yes. in my textbook, it's different. I yeah. thought, why do organisms? Why do organisms? Food. Why do organisms take food? Yes. Why do organisms take food? You can mute yourself. Okay. So generally, what does what is the main purpose of food? Students intake of food. The main function is it helps in growth. Yes. It helps in growth. One is growth. Next, uh, it provides energy. So that we can do our daily activities and uh, as well as it helps in replacement and repairing of damaged parts, right? This is also you can find in our body. So by taking food, so everything uh, can be cured by taking good food. Then it also gives resistance to fight against diseases. Resistance to fight against diseases. Do you know anything apart from this? Yes. Mom, help us do our daily activities. Yeah, so yes, it is that what we discussed in the second step. So it provides energy so that we can do our daily activities. Okay. So what is question two? What is question two students? Distinguish between parasite and saprotroph. Correct? So what is parasite? Parasite, it depends on the living organisms for food. Parasite and sapro so, depends on living organism for food. Whereas the saprotrophs of the depends on dead and decaying organisms okay next can you tell other point about parasite okay this is the point you can write for parasite and saprotroph and the next question how do you test the presence of starch in leaf? How we are testing students? How we are testing by placing in iodine? Mama, iodine right? yes. Yeah. So what is the result on placing in iodine solution? It changes color to blue-black, which indicates the presence of iodine. That is the uh, observation also. You have to write the conclusion. Okay. Next question, give a brief description of the process of synthesis of food in green plants. So what is the process students, which process, how they are preparing its food through the process of photosynthesis. So what is that process called as where carbon dioxide is combining with water in presence of sunlight. So what are the products it is preparing? Carbohydrate plus water. So this you have to write. This is the brief process of synthesis of food in green plants. Next question. Show with the help of a stitch that plants are ultimate source of food. Can you tell? Like from the sunlight plants derive food, right? From sunlight, 
plants take which takes students green plants okay so green plants become food for herbivores what are herbivores students mom herbivores are the animals which only eat um, plants, plants right yes. whereas carnivores they eat plants, plants as well carnivores means they eat only like animals like herbivores and which can eat green plants herbivores and carnivores uh, are called as decomposers decomposers can decompose everything so this is the structure which helps ultimate source of food okay next now filling the blanks green plants are called dash since they synthesize their own food what are uh, why green what uh, green plants are called as students are there autotrophs heterotrophs green plants are yes green plants are autotrophs good so as we discuss green plants prepare carbohydrate nothing but glucose and how it is stored in the plant body in which form students yes yeah, i already um, discussed i already told you in last class it prepare food like a glucose you can call carbohydrate and food is uh, utilized for its metabolic activities and the remaining food is stored in the plant body in the form of starch don't we discuss this so in the form of starch which is also nothing but a carbohydrate this we already discussed that is the second question so the food synthesized by the plant is stored as starch okay next in photosynthesis solar energy is captured by the pigment called what is the pigment students what is that pigment called as which pigment helps in yes it is a chlorophyll very good next during photosynthesis plants take in dash what plants take students and what they gives out you can see from the diagram what they are taking they are taking uh, water and they are giving sorry this oxygen is, this is not water this is oxygen so they are taking co2 and giving oxygen for us okay next do we complete all the questions the next question name the following a parasitic plant with yellow slender and tubular stem which plant students we already discussed yellow color climber like structure which it is called as cascuta right next a plant that has both autotrophic and heterotrophic mode of nutrition which is is called as insectivorous plant okay so it, it lacks nutrients to balance that nutrients it is taking insects next the pores through which leaf exchange gases is called as which pores stomata that's it i think we have completed all the questions So, and the remaining are true or false that you can easily answer them. Okay, so we are done with the chapter nutrition. On Sunday, you will be having test forms. Okay, students. So let me know if you have any doubts regarding this chapter, any topic to be explained again. No, ma'am. Everybody. Akshaya, Majumdar. Mama, I have no doubts. Okay, Majumdar. Are you there? No doubt, ma'am. Okay then. I think we 
we have discussed all the topics and we covered the textual questions as well yes ma'am okay then shall i end the session and i'll share the pdf in the group okay ma'am okay, okay ma'am